as it was just stated, this was a last minute request. And every time I do a service, I try to <coughs> feed information to who I'm in front of. And I thought about it and then I said, you know what, let me turn to one of my books that I wrote and went to one of the chapters. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's in Romans 15, 13. I wanted to share this subject of joy today with each and every one of you that I have written about in one of my books, This Joyous Sunday Morning. My friends, if you are seeking a break breakthrough in some area of your life today, I have very, very good news with, uh, for you. The closer you get to God, the closer you will be to your relationship. How do I know this? because the Bible describes him as the Lord of breakthroughs or the Lord of births through, and that's in 1 Chronicles 14, 11. What resources do you need from heaven to find joy? Do you need today? Do you need more love, more power, more peace, more provisions, more strength, and more joy? All of this and much more is available when you draw near to the Lord of breakthroughs. But I want to concentrate on joy this very moment, this very morning. I have told you this so that my joy may be in your joy, my joy may be with your joy and be complete in John 15:11. During some of life's sweetest moments that we experience in life, when all is right with the world, all your fondest hopes and wildest dreams come true, and your heart nearly explodes with happiness. You could make your own personal, it doesn't get any better than this commercial if you really wanted to. But there are also other moments when nothing seems to go your, your way. And I'm sure each and every one of us had those experiences one time or another. And your fondest hopes and wildest dreams lie in shattered pieces at your feet. Those are the moments when your heart aches with bitterness and unf unfilled longings, broken promises, or grief so powerful it threatens to take you to your knees. Where does joy fit in to these scenes from your life? So is joy really possibility when everything seems to be going wrong in your life? Finds it hard to, to have that joy when things are just crumbling all around you. And have you wondered why some people seem to experience deep and authentic joy in their daily lives, even in the toughest times of their own lives? And others can't seem to find it no matter how hard they search and no matter where they search for joy. Many eventually give up the pursuit, assuming that they, they were unfortunate enough to have been standing on the wrong side of the door when God was handing out a bag of joy. I am here this morning to say, I've learned that's not just true, even though it may not feel that way to you at this particular moment, no matter what you're facing, joy is available to you. You may be thinking, I don't experience joy as much as other people do. It's just not my thing. Oh, joy means living in denial of all the pain in the world. But as I've discovered in my own life, and you might have discovered it in your own lives, joy is not about the circumstances or about how you feel. It is definitely not about living in denial and ignoring sorrow or pain. Joy is something much deeper, richer, more stable, definitely more accessible than you might have ever thought it is available. That's the beauty of the joy God offers you each and every day. You no longer need to live in fear or worry because God's joy will always be available to you. In this world, you will have trouble, Jesus says, but you can still take heart. You can still receive joy, you are not dependent on anyone or anything other than God and yourself to know joy. 
You can't receive joy from others. Joy is a choice that you make to either have or not have. Nothing I will say in the rest of this particular service is more critical to the way you have live out your years than that small sentence. Joy is a choice. The level of joy you experience is completely and totally up to you. It is not dependent on anyone else. That way you do or you don't do, how they behave or you don't behave is totally up to you. Joy cannot be manipulated by actions of puny human beings that might want to take your joy away. It is not dependent on the amount of sadness or suffering or difficulties that you endure. Joy cannot be held hostage to fear, to pain, to anger, even to disappointment or sadness or grief. Joy is a choice. At the end of any given day, the amount of joy you experience is the exact amount of joy you choose to experience. If you get less joy, it's because you chose to take or provide less joy in your life. You, my friends, are in charge of your own joy with God in your life. The sooner you embrace this um, pivotal reality, the sooner you can begin to live a more joyful life. God created us to be joyful. There's really no doubt about it that God wants us all to experience 100% joy if we choose to experience that. But God has left the decision whether to uh, access that joy totally up to all of us. You and I get to decide if we're going to choose joy or not. Created by God, bought and paid for by Jesus' death on the cross, given as a personal gift from the Holy Spirit. When you think about it like that, it's hard to imagine why any of us would ever refuse God's gift of joy. So let me encourage each and every one of you to choose joy going forward if you haven't done so. Ask God to rekindle hope in your heart and to help you keep seeking the joy that God provides that belongs to you in Jesus Christ. And remember, as Jesus said in John 15, 11, these things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full and 100% your choice. May God bless each and every one of you, and I hope that each and every one has a great life with Jesus Christ in your life. Thank you very much for having me again.